My topic this morning is Fear of the Lord, Part 4. And I have been on this fear of the Lord, and that's just been sticking in my spirit because we find ourselves in a place where we are so afraid of everything. Everything is designed to make us afraid. So we got to stand on the word of God. We got to know where we stand with God. Amen. Amen. Because if we believe what the world is saying, we will be frightened. Mm -hmm. And we will miss the mark. And we will not miss, uh, make the purpose or live for the purpose that God has for us. Amen. Yeah. So our scripture lesson this morning is Psalms 91. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 8, and it reads, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. And our focus scripture this morning is going to be Psalms 91, 3 and 4, and it says, surely... He will save you from the foulest snare. That's the Lord, okay? Amen. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. And that's simply letting us know that God has us protected. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The fear of the Lord is an awareness that we are in the presence of a holy just and almighty God and that he will hold us accountable for our motives, thoughts, words, and actions. Mm -hmm. To fear God is to desire to live in harmony with his righteous standards and to honor him in all we do. And the state of this world causes constant fear of many things and situations. We are living through perilous times with pandemics, climate changes, mm -hmm. mass shootings, school shootings, extreme and excessive violence, and that's just among many other things that are designed to make us fearful. But when we look at the circumstances surrounding us, they are quite intimidating and sometimes downright frightening. But when we know who God is and we know who we are in God and we know that we are in his will, and living a life intentionally to please God, yes. it makes the trouble of this world less dreadful. Mm -hmm. Because we have a promise that the world doesn't have. Mm -hmm. We have confidence in God's ability to protect us. Amen. See, fearing God requires us to be humble. Yes. Because yes. we are not depending on our own strength. Mm -hmm. We are depending on God's strength to get us through and navigate us through this world. Mm -hmm. The scriptures we just read should give us a supernatural assurance that nothing in this world has power over us. Amen. Because we put our faith in the power of God, not the faith in our own power. Amen. When we can sleep at night in peace, despite the uncertainty of everything around us, then we have fully embraced the power of our God. The word never tells us that life will be trouble free. But it does tell us that we will not be defeated. Amen. 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 Luke 10, 19 mm -hmm. tells us that I have given you, and this is what God promises to us, his people. Amen. 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 He says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions mm -hmm. and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Nothing, Nothing will harm you. Yes. If you believe that, Everything won't make you afraid. Amen. If your light bill two hundred dollars and you only got one, you are not afraid because you know who your provider is. Amen. Right. Amen. Now, if you squandered it, that's something different. <laughs> but if you're depending on the Lord to make your ends meet, and that's where your faith is, He has never let me down. Amen. Amen. I heard the brother testify this 
last one about not having a paycheck. I went years without having a paycheck. And now that I have one, I don't have no more money than I had before I had one. Because the Lord was taking care of me day by day. So I can, I can attest to that as well. Amen. I did not want for anything. I didn't Amen. need anything. And Amen. as a matter of fact, I had more than enough. Amen. And was still able to be a blessing yes. to others. Just because God was taking care of me. Yes. And he entrusted it to me because he knew what I was going to do with it. Amen? Amen. Amen? So if you want more than enough, plan to be more than generous. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Because everything God gives you is not for you. you Somebody you needs to know that God exists because of you. You need to be the vessel that somebody is thanking God for and saying, God, I know you are real because she just answered my prayers that I only pray to you. Amen. That's what we're here for. It's, it's, this life ain't all about us. You gotta, it's got to be somebody who's going to God thanking him for you. And the knowledge of having the authority God has given us to those of us who fear and love him mm -hmm. gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh, yes. When the world tells us it's okay to do the things that God has deemed dishonorable, mm -hmm. we choose to obey the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 We, don't, we, we don't choose to do what's popular because if we did, it'll be standing room only. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't trying to obey the Lord. As a matter of fact, that's a little bit boring. It's not exciting enough. But that's just because you ain't in your word. Because if you like to read and you get in that word, it's quite exciting. Oh, yeah. Living a lifestyle that adapts to the will of God is not popular. It is not. I understand. So we have to be prepared to be cast out, isolated, left out, uninvited, right. even mistreated because we refuse to conform to the ways of the world. Amen. But guess what? The word tells us in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, the word says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Mm. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Mm -hmm. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. This life is a temporary situation Amen. that will determine how we spend eternity. Yeah. So if you choose to have self-gratification today and have all your fun in this world and choose not to obey the Lord, you will pay for it at some point. Amen. So that's why we don't envy sinners because it looks like they're having the time of their life. They're having the time of their death. All right, all right. Because they don't pay for the life they live on this earth. We all are going to pay for the life we live. Right. And it's either going to be repaid with good or be repaid with bad. But whatever seeds we are sowing, that is the harvest we are going to reap. Amen. Amen. So we got to stop telling people, you know, it's okay. Be tolerant. No, no. No, I'm not tolerant. As a matter of fact, I have zero tolerance for foolishness. Amen. If God said it's not okay, it's not okay. I'm going to say that every time I get a microphone in my head. I'm going to say it every time somebody got an ear to listen. If God says it's not okay, it's not okay. Amen. He said let your yes be yes and your no be no. His word has not changed since the Bible was written. Amen. The world changes on a constant and daily basis. What's cool today in the world might not be cool tomorrow in the world. Right. Somebody that told my children they can't pray at school, but we got a class over here to teach you how to be tolerant. Not on my watch. Not, right now. Not on my watch. Mm -hmm. And all of us as parents and grandparents, we got to stand up to this world. Mm -hmm. Somebody need to be in these schools saying no, 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 no. That's right. No, don't just send them off to school so you can get eight hours of freedom. I mean, I enjoy that, but... <laughs> <laughs> But you still got to have a purpose. You still got to do your job. And if you find out that your children are being taught something that's contrary to the word of God, it's your job. That's right. I don't care if I can't take for one person out of that class. I'm taking mine out. That's right. And if she want to pray, let her pray. That's right. See, we ain't making enough 
enough noise. Mm -hmm. The world making noise about this mess mm -hmm. that they want us to tolerate. Mm -hmm. My God said no. I choose to obey the word of God. Amen. I don't care how many parades you have, it is still not going to make it okay. Amen. So we got to decide. We got to decide. We got to decide we're going to be louder than they are. Okay. See, we let them talk us out of our faith. Mm -hmm. We let them talk us out of the word. Mm -hmm. They come up and tell us all their philosophies. We got a word that never changes. No, you start telling them the word. That's right. Amen. Amen. Stop being so timid when it comes to the word of God. Because right. if somebody say something about your mama, you ready to kill them. So use that same energy when somebody says something contrary to what the word says. Amen. See, we got energy for the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. If somebody says your mama ugly, she might be ugly or she might be pretty, but what difference does that make? Mm -hmm. Beauty is suggestive. Mm -hmm. So what's pretty to me ain't pretty to the next person. Mm -hmm. So if you think my mama's ugly, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. Then don't look at my mama. <laughs> But if you think you're going to tell me that it's okay for my children to do something that's contrary to what the word says, we got a conversation. That's right. mm -hmm. Now we need to talk. Mm -hmm. I don't need to talk to you about what you think about my mama. I don't need to talk to you about your opinion about how I look. I don't need to talk to you about your opinion about what, what house I live or what car I should drive. That's your opinion. That's right. Everybody got one. That's right. Use it however it makes you happy. But when we talking about the word of God and you, and you, what you got to say is contrary to what this word says, we got to have a conversation. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we got to start having some power behind our word mm -hmm. and stop using all these empty words. Because mm -hmm. if the word says it's true, Amen. it's right. true. Mm -hmm. And you, we let people tell us their truth. Mm -hmm. You take your truth <laughs> and I'll let your imagination tell you what to do with your truth. Because we only dealing with the truth. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The truth ain't going to make always feel good to us. Mm -hmm. We just know it's better to do it than not. That's right. Amen. The truth don't always tell, tell us, you know, what you did today was very good. <laughs> As a matter of fact, sometimes the truth has you sitting somewhere crying. Because you know you did something wrong. I can attest to that just a couple of weeks ago. I said some things and I went all the way back to Egypt. I just looked around and I said, where did all these Egyptians come from? <laughs> and I cried and I prayed and finally the Lord said, get up and wipe your face. Okay. All right, you made a mistake, now what? Mm -hmm. What you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. You going to keep crying? You need somebody to hear your story? Get up and get back about my business. Amen. So that's what we got to learn how to do. Because yeah. we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody perfect. Jesus is already back in heaven. So it ain't nobody that should make you feel like because you made a mistake, you're not a child of God. If you made a mistake, get it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm going to give you a little story about a man in the Bible who was willing to do what the Lord says, period. All right. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. Mm -hmm. And I know you all are very familiar with the story of Abraham, but I'm going to just give you a summary, just so I can make my point today. Genesis chapter 12, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. The Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land where I will show you. Now I'm going to stop right there. The Lord told this man, get up, leave everything that's familiar to you, and I'll give you the rest of the instructions while you're moving. The Lord can give us the whole picture. We still say, is that you, Lord? Is that you, Lord? Amen. You know it's the Lord. If they ain't telling you to go rob somebody, you know it's the Lord. If it's telling you to do something that's right, you know it's the Lord. Stop asking the Lord, is it him? Verse 2 said, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Hear that part. God told him, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing. Come on. See, we love part A. Mm -hmm. When are we?
we going to fall in love with part B. Come on, man. Be a blessing. Make a sacrifice. Spend some time making somebody else's day. If your day is already made, find somebody to make their day. I done been in the grocery store and the lady's card wouldn't go through. I said, honey, let me swipe this. Yeah. Just what's within an issue. She's like, oh, I got it. Just look, honey, let the Lord use me. Come on now. And get on up out here. Yeah. That's and she, right. when I got out to the car, she was still standing outside. She said, I just couldn't let you go without saying thank you. My mm -hmm. Lord. I was doing it for her. Yes. She just happened to be at the right place at right. the right time. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask her her name. She didn't ask me mine. I didn't give her my business card and tell her when you're ready to buy a house, call me. I, it was nothing personal, and it was nothing in it for me except knowing that I pleased my father at that moment. Amen. Amen. That's good. Verse 3 says, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. Mm -hmm. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause on verse 3. I'm, I'm trying to get it to you so you get it. Three. Stop cursing people because you don't know who they mean and what they mean to the Lord. Amen. Come on now. Mm -hmm. So just because you don't like somebody, they didn't, you didn't feel in them today, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us to pray for those that come against us. Right. So you don't know what they mean to God. It's just because they look a little raggedy to you. Come on. God might have them right there in his right hand. Come on now. So as soon as you go off on them, you know you don't went off on the Lord. On, so man. watch your mouth. That's it. That's it. That's good. That's good. So Abram went as the Lord told him. My Lord. And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Har Haran. Hmm. Now, you know how long you got to be set in your ways in 75, because I'm set in mine. <laughs> I know. 75 years, this man was set in his ways. Mm -hmm. But he was not so set that he could not respond to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Come on, so man. I want you to hear that. You ain't never too late. It ain't never too late to change. Amen. This man was 75 years old when the Lord said, hey, leave your family. So that's all he knew. Come on. He took his wife, verse 5, Sarah, and his nephew Lot. All the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Now I'm going to go back to this too. Because... All of the promises God made this man. If you if you read verse 5 carefully, this man wasn't poor. Mm -hmm. He had his own wealth, and he had people working for him. Okay. He not only had livestock and animals and a wife, he had people working for him. Okay, okay. So none of that was more important than God. Amen. See, that's why people think money is a sin. No, money is not a sin. Having money is not a sin. But letting that money dictate your life as opposed to letting the Lord dictate your life is how you fall into sin. Right. And that's why most of us won't never have a lot of it. Because mm -hmm. if you had money, you would never call on the Lord. Wow. People think money is the solving of all the problems mm -hmm. until they got a pocket full of money and somebody tell them they got canceled that they can't pay to get rid of. Them. Right now. Then you fall right back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the last 10 years, you've been out here balling in these streets. You ain't paid a dime in nobody's church. Mm -hmm. Now you want to fall up in somebody's church and everybody's supposed to pay you some kind of honor. Look, we all the same in God's house. That's true. We here for Jesus. True. Ain't nobody we worshiping in here. Come on now. So no, if, if ain't nobody treating you special at church, it's because you ain't. Mm -hmm. Come on, church. <laughs> Excuse me. Amen. Amen. Everybody got a job to do. The person that clean up the bathroom is just as important as the person that bring the word. Because we all doing it for the same reason. And that's for God. So leave your importance in your car. And then when you get ready to go back to work where they call you boss, then put it back on. When you come in here, Jesus is the boss. Abraham chose to obey the voice of God despite his upbringing. Right. I'm going to tell y'all this one too because I, I want y'all to hear me today. Mm -hmm. I ain't playing with you today. Mm -hmm. You not. Despite his upbringing, he decided to obey the voice of God. Mm -hmm. See, we would think 
if Abraham at 75 heard from God that clearly and decided to move, he must have been brought up by these godly people. And no, that ain't the truth. That's not the truth. Let me turn to Joshua 24 too, and I'm going to prove it to you. See, that's why you got to know God for yourself. Amen. You can't know your mama's God. You got to know your God. Joshua 24 and 2 says, Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, father of Abraham, and Noah, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. Mm -hmm. So he went and brought up with the knowledge of the Lord. Because his father was worshiping other gods. Mm -hmm. See, we don't know why God tells us to do what he tells us to do. Just do it. Amen. He probably knew Lord, I mean, that Abraham wasn't going to fulfill his destiny if he over here in his father's house where they worshiping other gods. Mm -hmm. So he sent them away. This is just my theory. I, ain't, I wasn't there. Okay. But he sent them away for a reason. And whatever his reason was, was his reason. God don't owe you no explanation. Most of the time, he don't give you one. All you have to do is obey. And then at the end, you realize God told me to do this. And wow. Mm -hmm. It always ends when you obey the Lord with a wow. wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. You might not ever know the, in the middle of it. Amen. But it ain't for you to know you're not God. See, we always like the little detail. That's how we waste our thinking on the details that don't matter to you. God behind the scene doing the work. All you got to do is move when he say move. That's right. move. Yeah. Obedience is evidence that we fear the Lord. Amen. And it's also evidence that we fear the world. Mm -hmm. So whatever you obey, that's your God. And if we fear him, we will obey him instantly. Not that, is that you, God? I don't want to hear that no more. No, when he say move, and you know in your spirit, if you got a relationship with God, you know when he's talking to you. That's right. That's right. Amen. And let me just be honest with y'all. Our flesh is contrary to God. Our flesh is not a friend of God. That's why we have to operate in our spirit. See, our flesh don't want to do the things God is telling us to do. Somebody come against you and the Lord say, you know what, go over there and bless them. Your flesh say, no, I got something to do. I need to tell them something. And the Lord telling you, yeah, go over there and tell them I love them. Mm -hmm. See, our flesh is at war with our spirit as well. Amen. So don't think all the devils are around you. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Grab that mirror mm -hmm. and cast them out. Because, see, we always talk about, oh, look at all these devils around me. I just got to get my spirit. No, you don't get yourself right. Get your devil under control. Because ain't nobody's flesh eager to do what God is telling us to do. So that's why you got to exercise your spirit. You got to make that spirit man bigger than your flesh. Because if you don't, you're going to fail every time. The flesh will win. No muscle gets stronger without exercise. Your spirit ain't no different. Yeah. You get up every day, and I guarantee you most people eat three hot meals. How much of that time are you spending on your spirit? How many times a day are you picking up your word and saying, Lord, let me just read a couple of scriptures right now. Let me spend five minutes with you. See, we got to be honest. Yeah. And, that, and that's why we so weak spiritually. Because we ain't exercising that muscle. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing nothing about it. The most our spirit get is if we decide to slide in church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't feed your body once a week, you can't feed your spirit once a week and expect for it to be effective. Amen. When I say when you trust the Lord, you obey him instantly. Even if it hurts, and most of the time it hurts, that's how you know it's God. When the devil tell you to do something, it don't hurt. It gives you some instant gratification. They have you somewhere looking real crazy in about an hour. Because after he finished using you, he leave you and let you wall in that by yourself. Even if you don't understand why God is telling you to do it, most of the time you won't. So don't try to. Just 
don't even try to. Even if you don't even see no benefit in it. Even if you say, even if I do this, what difference is it? You don't know what God is doing, okay? Mm -hmm. Stop trying to be God's co-pilot. I hate that bumper sticker. You ain't his co-pilot. <laughs> Just do what he tells you to do. Amen. He'll give you the result at the end. Amen. If you don't, you won't complete the task that God got for you. The plan for your life will never be realized because we are so busy chasing dreams and chasing things that the world is chasing instead of doing the one thing God told us to do is to fear him, love him, and love each other. The rest of this stuff, we just doing busy work. I hate a busy body. I'd rather be doing something or nothing. But I ain't going to be playing like I'm doing nothing. But I ain't got nothing to do. I ain't doing nothing. We ain't got nothing to do in this world but obey the Lord, go where he leads us, and do what he tells us to do. I mean, you, you we want to be productive, so I'm, I'm not saying don't go to college, don't start, you know. Look, you want to go to college, go to college. But college ain't going to help you realize the dreams and the plans that God has for you. If God tells you to go to college, go to college. But you still got to be led by the Spirit because we do need some doctors. And we do need some lawyers, but God is the ultimate doctor and the ultimate lawyer. Amen. And some of these people going to school to be a doctor would never be a doctor because that was never the plan for them anyway. Amen. Plus, in the flesh, we don't we ain't that motivated. All right. It's got to be something on the inside helping us. <laughs> so if your help ain't there, you just wasting time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this man went just as the Lord told him to. But does that make him perfect? No, absolutely not. But it does make him righteous. We would never be per perfect, I mean perfect, because we'd already made too many mistakes. Right. But we can always be righteous, no matter what nobody think about it, say about it, or feel about it. If God calls me righteous, I'm righteous. Amen. Abram had the faith to go when God said go. But let me tell you how I know he wasn't perfect in his faith. Because he lacked the faith that God would protect him when him and his wife was going to, to, to the Egyptian. So he told them, that's my sister. He just flat out lied. Mm -hmm. That same God that was leading you where he was leading you was also protecting you. All right now. So we can, you know, he dropped the ball. And I'm saying that so that we don't get discouraged when we drop the ball. Right. But what we got to stop doing is exercising the same muscle. Mm -hmm. Look, your right arm's strong now. You got to work on the left. All right. You might master one area, but you got to start on another. Start working on the area you haven't mastered. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't all the way there. He had the faith to move. But he didn't have the faith that they thought was going to protect him. But he got this pretty woman with him. And then all these men, she, the Pharaoh want her. Well, she just my sister. He was trying to protect himself when he had a God that was already protecting him. Amen. God revealed that that was his wife to Pharaoh. Now. See, God don't play with us. Even, even when we fall short, he still loves us. Amen. He still loves us. Amen. Pharaoh said, why did you put, do this to me? Get your wife and get out of here. Because God was making Pharaoh pay for dishonoring Abraham. But Abraham lied. I'm saying all that to say, just because you don't think somebody is worth it don't mean God doesn't. We got to take off these self-righteous, judgmental attitudes and start loving each other right where we are, meeting people right where they are, because God met us right where we were. Amen. We got to tell people the truth, and we got to tell them in love, and we got to love them while they're dealing with it. That's good. That's good. See, it's easy for us to say our peace. Come on. I done told you something. Don't call me no more. I, I, I'm guilty of that. I, I can be honest. I'm guilty of that. You make me mad one time too many. And my number ain't changed in 20 years, but I won't answer you. <laughs> so I, I, this for me too. Amen. Because for, forgiving people 
is necessary. And sometimes people mess up more than once. But guess what? Sometimes I mess up more than once. Sometimes you mess up more than once. And somebody got to do the same thing for you. So you got to be willing to do that same thing for other people. Amen. Amen. Out of all the mistakes Abraham made, he was still considered the father of faith. Not a perfect man, the father of faith. We are all righteous through Abraham. God still kept all of his promises to Abraham because of his obedience. No other reason. No other reason. I'm trying to get you somewhere. You, you want to go somewhere different in life? You ready for a new level? You want to break through these glass ceilings? That's what we like to say. Obey. Obey. If God can't tell you to give me $5, you think he's going to tell you you're going to be able to give somebody 50 if God can't tell you to pay 10% of your income, and your income ain't but $100, so you ain't willing to give up 10, you think you're going to be willing to give up 100 off of 1,000? See, some of these places we are at are just tests to see how faithful we're going to be. See, you got to prove you're going to be faithful with little before somebody can entrust you with a lot. Amen. Proverbs 24, 16 says, Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. In other words, when you make a mistake, get up. Get yourself back on course. Tell the Lord you're sorry with the intention of never doing it again. Amen. See, because nobody want to hear you sorry for the same thing 10 times. Because after the third time, I don't even believe you no more. Amen. So get up and tell the Lord, I'm sorry. Amen. And then make a change. Amen. That's all repenting is. Amen. Listen, God is happy when we do that. That's right. People might not, because sometimes when we make mistakes, people don't ever want us to get back right. They want us to pay for that for the rest of our lives. But guess what? They, if, if that was the truth, or if that was the case, they would be paying for something for the rest of their lives also. Mm -hmm. So you got to make a conscious decision for yourself that when I make a mistake or when I fall short, I got to know what God says about me. Mm -hmm. See, we so busy trying to make sure people like us, uh -huh. people didn't even like Jesus. And he was here to save their souls. So please, please stop thinking that everybody's going to like you. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how gracious you are. I don't care how great you are. Somebody's going to find fault with it. I've been called a hypocrite because I would pay somebody's rent again. And I said, well, I'll hip old crit on. <laughs> Because I know what God says about me. That's right. And the first time I was led to do it. And after I wasn't led to do it anymore, I'm not doing it. Because I'm not the Savior. God might have another ram in the bush for you. But I need you to know God is doing it. I don't want you to think I'm your Savior. Nobody. Because I need the same Savior that I'm talking about. So we, we, we got to be careful that if we don't listen to the word, because the devil is a liar. He is. He's a liar. And he will tell you anything, and hopefully you believe it. Because he don't want you to see the power that you have in you. If, if we have the power of God in us, it ain't no devil in hell that can stop us. Amen. I'm going to tell y'all a little hint. I'm going to give y'all a little secret that I figured out. When, they, when the Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion looking for who he can divide, devour, let me tell you what a roaring lion is. A roaring lion is a lion that's old, got no teeth, and really can't fight. Lions don't roar. Wow. When lions are seeking their prey, baby, that? they slide up in there. Right. They, they quiet, uh -huh. and they trying to catch something. Uh -huh. When a lion is roaring, he just want to scare you. So let him keep roaring. Roar back. He probably a cowardly lion. So don't be afraid of that. 
And when lions are seeking their prey, baby, you won't hear them. That's right. And watch some of these animal movies. Mm -hmm. So the, the word is letting you know he just bluffing. <laughs> Most of the time, he want us to get scared and bow down. Yeah. We just get out the fight because we hear him all loud. Wow. That's good. You get louder. All you got to do is start worshiping. Right you want him to get away from you. Amen. Put a word on it. Right. But that's a bluff. That's, that's my secret for y'all today. All that right. roaring lion ain't got no teeth. Mm -hmm. And he ain't really got no fight in him. Mm -hmm. He just hoping don't nobody take him down. Mm -hmm. So he just going to be the loudest one in the room. Have y'all realized that ever thought about usually the person that's doing the most yelling is the weakest person in the room? Mm -hmm. See, people with power don't yell. Come on now. People with power ain't running around hollering and screaming and acting a fool. Come on. They like, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Mm. Okay. You do I make all the noise you want. Mm -hmm. I got the power. Mm -hmm. Say less. Mm -hmm. Let's learn to say less. Mm -hmm. Even after. God promised Abraham a son. Abraham was 99 years old. He was 100 years old when the son that God promised him was born. All right. And his wife was 90 years old. Mm -hmm. See, that, there are some things that have no explanation. Yes. They didn't even believe that. Because mm -hmm. with man, that is impossible. Mm -hmm. But not with God. Amen. And even after God gave him the precious baby, then God said, now go sacrifice. Yep. See, that's why we got to be obedient because we don't know what God is doing. Come on. We'll never know what he's up to. We can stop trying to figure him out and just do what he said. Amen. And guess what Abraham did with his baby he loved? Strapped him down and was ready to slay him because God said so. Yes. And then I'm going to tell you how God responded. Turn to Genesis 22, 12. Verse 12 says, do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And I, I don't want to go back too far because we don't get out of here in a minute. He had another son, Ishmael. God referred to this one as his only son because that's the one he gave. All right. So y'all better stop picking up all these strays. Because God ain't recognizing them. Y'all don't wonder why they don't get right. Because they didn't, they didn't come from God. They, wouldn't, they didn't start out right. right. God said, your only son, as far as the Lord was concerned, our faith has to be tested. Will we obey God when we don't understand? Will we obey God when we really just don't even want to do it? See, I don't know anybody that I know that would have passed that test. Sacrifice your son. All right. I just, I don't. Mm -hmm. And most of us struggle to obey God because we trust what we see yeah. more than we trust what God say. Mm -hmm. It's true. But what we do, not what we say, shows God that we believe him. Yeah. Amen. And as I close, I want to remind you that God has a plan for all of our lives that is far greater than anything we can imagine. God sees us the way he made us, not how people see you, not the mistakes you made, because once you ask for forgiveness, he don't even want to see you like that anymore. That's right. So God sees us how he made us. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got to see ourselves. Mm -hmm. We got to get grounded and rooted in the word because what's acceptable in this world is not acceptable to God. We have the potential, every last person under, that can hear my voice, have the potential to be great with the God that's within us. See, my, my light shouldn't put out your light. I, I shouldn't have to deal my light for you to shine. We all got the same Holy Spirit living in us. The fact of the matter is, are you activating the Holy Spirit? Or is it just dormant? 
Are you utilizing the Holy Spirit every day? Are you talking to God every day? Are you asking God to help you throughout your day? Amen. Or do you think you're just doing this life on your own? Mm. If we seek the power that God has given us and stop, cease, stop seeking power from this world mm. and accolades from this world, we'll all see greatness because that's what God has for us. So if God says do it, I want you to treat it like it's a fresh pair of Nikes and just do it. I got one final scripture because I'd like to leave you with a word. And that's Psalms 91, 14 through 16. And it says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and better than long life, I will show him my salvation. That's the promise of heaven. Amen. 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 Amen.